Harry's Wife, Part 105.2.4 The Sussex Series She dumps. She trades Harry out. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor, taking you on an unrivaled analysis of the dynamic between a narcissist and the intimate partner primary source, which is applicable to so many circumstances, but also is providing you with insight into what might happen with regard to the Sussexes. Whilst there is a degree of speculation associated with this, it's speculation based upon solid principles. Namely, given that she is a narcissist and he is her victim, they will either hand up, end up with a situation where he escapes her, she gets rid of him, or they stay together and this, the cycle of abuse continues. That is what happens in the dynamic between a narcissist and the intimate partner primary source. Therefore, there is a solid foundation that one of those options will occur. And then, within each option, I've explained the likelihood of what will occur, or rather the likely occurrences, based upon her being a middle-mid-range narcissist and Harry's personality also. So whilst we can't say for definite that he will escape, what I can say to you is, if that happens, this is how it will play out. Whilst I can't say to you that she will definitely disengage from him, I can say to you that that's likely, because that's what most narcissists do, and I can also identify the likely grounds on which she will do so, namely, he's too difficult to control, he breaks down, or she trades him for somebody else, and what is likely to happen in those scenarios, based upon the narcissistic dynamic. You won't get this anywhere else. And I would encourage you to ensure that you like this video and get this one and the others shared as far and wide as possible so that people understand more about the dynamic and also that they can actually receive some genuine impact and input upon how their relationship is going to pan out rather than people looking at tea leaves and into crystal balls. Now, the third possible disengagement trigger of the five, I've discounted two as being unlikely, is that she gets rid of Harry because she's found somebody else. Before we get into the nuts and bolts of what would happen when that occurs, this does of course present a couple of questions beforehand. First of all, why would she not want to remain with a prince? I've noticed in the comments section that some people will say she'll never get rid of him because he's a prince and she won't find anybody better. Well, that is a possibility, but it's not likely. But why would she get rid of a prince? Well, there's two factors. First of all, his reduced status. It may well be that the children haven't got titles. It might be that they've even been stripped of the titles themselves because they're no longer working royals and because of their behaviour. He isn't, therefore, attractive in terms of a prospect for corporations and businesses and organisations, and so the money drops down. So once made him what once made him hugely attractive, the fact that he was a prince of the realm with lots of money and the potential to make even more money in a, la in a royal family that was the most famous royal family on the planet, and everything that had entailed, big, big prize for a D-list cable mattress actress, a lot of that has gone by the wayside. It naturally has eroded, but also you need to take this into account. He's painted black, which means whatever was once wonderful about him is now seen as basically shit. So what? You've got a title. Title, Schmeitel. I'm American. I don't care for them. And you're thinking, that's baloney. You still use yours. But remember, that's the hypocrisy of the narcissist. What's important for you to understand, and those of you who have been ensnared by narcissists will recognize this, is that when you're in the golden period, everything about you is amazing and wonderful because the narcissism tells the narcissist that that's the case. Accordingly, let's say you're a real hard body and you're physically attractive. Therefore, the narcissism will allow the narcissist to praise you for having buns of steel, for having a body to die for, that your bottom's so tight it bounces off the walls, and will flatter you accordingly. However, when you're painted black, the fact is you still are gorgeous, but not in the eyes of the narcissist. 
Instead, what happens is this. The narcissism causes the narcissist to then say, you're vain, you spend too much on potions and lotions, you're always down the gym and it's not healthy. Yeah, you th your body's not bad, but your personality stinks. And all of a sudden, what was once held up as being absolutely wonderful and placed on that pedestal is thrown into the dirt. So similarly for Prince Harry, even certain aspects of him which you might say would remain attractive are not seen as attractive because he's been painted black. And therefore, that question of, well, why not still stay with him because he's a prince, etc., etc., one, some of those benefits may naturally have eroded, and two, those that remain aren't seen as attractive any longer because he's painted black. This then leads to the next question. Okay, so Harry isn't the draw that he once was, but can she find somebody else? Uh, surely, after bagging a prince, everything else is effectively a downgrade, and who on earth will have her? Well, first of all, everything isn't a downgrade in the eyes of the narcissist for the reasons that I've just explained. His qualities have either naturally eroded and or are painted black. Therefore, a chimney sweep may well be seen as an improvement. And whilst objectively that would look like a downgrade, to the narcissist, it isn't. Remember, the fuel from a chimney sweep would, could well be superior to that of a prince when the prince is sulking and not responding. The chimney sweep is easier to control than the now defiant prince. The character traits of the chimney sweep may not be as multiple as they once were with the prince, but the prince's character traits are painted black and therefore aren't wanted. So the fact that the chimney sweep is a happy-go-lucky guy with lots of friends and is interested in fly fishing may still prove more attractive than that of a prince. The residual benefits. They may not be extensive with that chimney sweep, but still compared to the blackened prince, they are. And therefore... Because of the ease of control and the fact that that chimney sweep is pumping out gorgeous, sweet, positive fuel, that those two factors are actually more important than the character traits and the residual benefits. Now, of course, I'm not saying that someone such as Harry's wife would naturally decide that she's going to shack up with a chimney sweep, but the point is to say that the replacement doesn't necessarily have to be on a par with the person who has been kicked out. There are instances of those of you who've been ensnared by narcissists will say, I can't understand. You know, I'm decent looking, I'm intelligent, I held down a good job, I helped out in the home. And he or she went and chose basically a smelly blob of a person who hasn't got a job. Why? Well, to answer that in detail, go to the Knowledge Vault and obtain why does the narcissist downgrade. But essentially, it revolves around the fact that the incumbent is painted black and the new person is painted white. And therefore, in the eyes of the narcissist, not other people, but in the eyes of the narcissist, it isn't a downgrade. That person is easy to control. You're not. Therefore, the new person is better. That person's fuel is more voluminous than yours. Therefore, they are better than you. And... Even the smaller character traits and residual benefits will be painted in a better light compared to you. Furthermore, who will have her? Well, there are nearly 8 billion people on the planet, and there are still plenty of elderly, wealthy men that she could fleece by doling out some spicy poontang. After all, according to Harry, she lets you do anything. And therefore, with the application of plastic surgery, and perhaps once listening to a stylist, there's likely to be some clown somewhere that would find a berth for her. So ultimately, there's a potential for her to find a replacement for Harry. So it begins by her cozying up with someone who she has a friendship with, and then could be conducting an affair. If the scenario is one where Harry is being problematic in terms of control and is away a lot, then, first of all, this provides her with more time to cozy up to somebody, and he's going to be less bothered about what she's doing because he's focused elsewhere also. And therefore, it enables her to draw in that intimate partner secondary source far more easily. If Harry, for instance, isn't responding as much, or is getting on the path of being broken down but doesn't quite get there, again, it makes it easier for her to go and draw somebody else in. 
even if that isn't the case and it's just trundling along, she's likely to be able to do this in secret. Oh, I've got an important meeting about my next Kermit Goes to Church outfit, Harry. See you in eight hours. And Harry, perhaps relieved, as victims often are, that she's at least out of his hair and allowing him to play Call of Duty in quiet, then, in the quiet, then isn't bothered about the fact that she's gone missing for eight hours while she's being taken by the local polo team. So consequently, there's ample opportunity for her to find a new friend, in inverted commas, and conduct an affair. Thus, drawing that person in, they're painted white, and it's likely, of course, given the type of narcissist that she is with regard to her cadre, that she will be focusing on the material aspects of that individual. So, somebody with money, someone with a large house, someone who's able to buy the bling, etc. Somebody with contacts. And so her narcissism will be guiding her towards that person. And, through one method or another, she's able to draw them in, whilst Harry is either not interested or just relieved that she's out of his hair for a period of time. Or that he might be upset by her disappearances, but she doesn't give a fig and goes ahead and does them anyway. Ultimately, there comes a point where the narcissism determines that this person is better than the incumbent, and thus she gets rid of Harry. And he would either be furious, most likely in the circumstances where he's becoming too difficult to control, or distraught. Either way, he's going to be removed by her. Or he might agree to go on the basis of trying to resolve matters, which she will just pay lip service to, in order to get him out of the property. Either he storms out, furious at her behaviour, and runs and takes comfort in the arms of his paramour, or, if he hasn't got one, he's furious and he departs, and in such circumstances, she's ended the relationship, but he is quite happy to accept it. Or, she ends the relationship and he's distraught by it, and she tells him, we'll talk, we'll talk, but it's future faking, which is done just to get him out of the house so that she can then launch the divorce proceedings. Rumours will, of course, circulate about potential new relationship that she has, which will be played down, unless, of course, Harry decides that he's going to show off the blonde that he's selected, in which case that will threaten her sense of control and she will retaliate by saying Harry's wife is moving on and ensuring in hello and okay and Tatler's and Harper's Bazaar, etc., that there are plenty of pictures of her stepping out with the latest mug that she has ensnared. If he's furious about what's gone on, then there'll be a nasty divorce along the lines of mentioned in the previous section. If her disposal of him by disengaging as a consequence of bringing somebody else in leaves him hard hit and broken by it, then he will likely try and keep resolve, to try to resolve matters, but she will not do so because her mind has been made up. He's been jettisoned and he's painted black and the new person is painted white and therefore they are far superior to old ginger bollocks and whilst she might pay lip service to some kind of discussion, it's going to lead nowhere. Accordingly, there is the ample opportunity for her to find somebody else, and although it might be seen as a downgrade, there's a good chance that she'll select somebody whereby it isn't. And whoever she selects, in her eyes, it is not a downgrade at all. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.